happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega and I'm here to talk about happiness with Lionel Ketchian because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Okay, tonight for our Ketchian Ortega Happiness Dialogues number three, we're going to start off talking about happiness clubs. And Lionel um, actually has been running perhaps maybe the, the first happiness club in the world, um, perhaps the first, you know, in this, this country since uh, 1999, um, right here about half an hour away in Fairfield, Connecticut. And um, Lionel, tell, tell us about the club and, and why you think it's important to expand clubs, uh, not just throughout the country, but throughout the world. Sure, George. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, ever since we started the Happiness Club, it's been uh, a, a, a fantastic adventure, a wonderful experience, not only for me, but for the many people who have attended meetings and uh, uh, found out that happiness is an answer and a strategy for living our lives. And it's so interesting because, you know, we, we learn things on the internet, we go to school, we go to work, we try to better ourselves, but unless we're, we're learning more about happiness, we really aren't living the whole spectrum of the quality of life that is ours to live. And I would say that the happiness clubs have introduced people to practicing happiness, to living with happiness in their life, and sharing happiness with their friends, loved ones, family, and people that they come in contact with. So it's been a wonderful experience. Yeah, because you know, one can learn to become happier on one's own or through um, participation with others, like with the Happiness Club. What is it about being a part of a club like this that helps one to really, you know, practice becoming happier and, and to become better at it? Well, y you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is, it's probably, uh, the answer is probably many fold, but uh, number one is that you learn that happiness is a decision and you learn that it's a, a good idea to make this decision right here right now in this moment just as our viewers at home could could do right this moment they could uh... say to themselves you know what i'm i'm worth it uh... i can decide to be happy right now so of course our mind starts telling us that uh... Well, yeah, I, I say I'll be happy, but the next minute I don't know what can happen. And, you know, I've got lots of problems. And uh, how do I know that I'll be happy five minutes from now and something won't happen that'll, you know, that'll uh, take that away? Well, because happiness is about power, I can make the happiness decision. And five minutes from now, when something happens, I could choose to be happy then rather then become miserable or give my happiness away to the problem because you know what that does that makes me helpless in dealing with the problem and it makes me hopeless in coping with my own emotions and my own feelings that this problem could uh, instill in me so rather than give up my power I retain my power stay happy and deal with the problem so that's the first thing that people at the happiness club learn but the other great thing about the Happiness Club is that they learn that they can be happy and they can just give happiness to others. And the greatest way to teach happiness <laughs> is to be happy. There's, there's no greater way. I mean, uh, if somebody doesn't want to be happy, that's their prerogative. That's great. I can still be friends and happy to be around you and with you. But that's your choice uh, to be happy or unhappy. But to see that happiness works, to see that it has many benefits, and a happy person will want to share those with other people by just the presence of being happy and, and being friendly, because happier people are friendlier people. And happier people uh, like to do good. And you know, not all people who are doing good are happy, and that's the problem. So if you become happy, you can be good and happy and do whatever you do, but you do not get drained. You don't uh, start feeling as if you can't cope with the situations that present themselves. So happiness clubs are very important. And, I, and uh, you know, I think we have some uh, 
pretty much a landmark statement to announce tonight uh, that, that I'd like to say. We, we just found out uh, uh, today that uh, uh, a, a psychologist that is uh, getting her PhD, and her name is Amy Branch, has begun a happiness club in uh, uh, San, Francisco. San Francisco, California. So we have our first happiness club. Now you're starting a happiness club, right? I, I plan to, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully in the, in the coming months right now, I've got a few more projects um, to, to hopefully complete um, throughout the holidays. But yeah, I mean like, uh, Lionel's Club, I think, can be a model for clubs, not again, not just throughout this country, but throughout the world. And, you know, we're going to be trying to start them one at a time. So hopefully sometime soon we'll have a Happiness Club of White Plains. And uh, the way I want to structure this club is pretty much to give people an opportunity not just to learn from, let's say, a presenter about happiness, but also to share what they know. Um, we all have different ways of, of becoming happy, of, of becoming happier. Uh, what works for some of us may not work for others and vice versa and so, but we have our personal ways that we can share with others. So part of my club I think is going to be to to allow people to just, um, you know, come up before the, the, the audience, the club, and mm -hmm. just present their personal um, way, their personal strategies, what, what works for them. And that mm -hmm. way, you know, we can you know, take part as a club, not just in receiving information and, and um, being helped by the club, but also in helping others in the club. It, it should be a very, very active, interactive club. That's excellent, uh, George. I think that's wonderful. And uh, uh, basically, there's a lot of support out there now for, for the Happiness Club. I mean, it began in 1999. And actually, it began because I was giving uh, courses on happiness. In fact, uh, a class called Be Happy No Matter What at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. And at the end of a four-week class where the students were, were learning how to be happy, and how to be happy no matter what and bringing that out into their life they they decided actually joanne petiti one of the students uh, at the time in the first class said now that we got to this point after four weeks i don't want this to end i, I think we have to perpetuate it we have to keep this alive and going because uh, i've learned something i want to share it and I, and i want to keep learning about happiness because the most wonderful thing about happiness it is it is a great powerful uh, feeling to have, but like all feelings, like all muscles, if you don't practice it, if you don't use it, it's going to atrophy. You're not going to have it anymore. You're going to, you know, wake up one day and say, "Gee, uh, where did it go?" So it has to be foremost in your mind. It has to happiness has to be first. So at the end of this class, uh, we decided to begin happiness uh, clubs, and we had our first meeting in January of 2000, actually, and it snowed but there was about 29 people that came out in a snowstorm <laughs> and it began and now we usually have 50 we've had a hundred uh, we've had dinners we've uh, we've done lots of different things but the cl but you know I got an email uh, yesterday from uh, a guy who lives in uh, Canada and uh, it seems that these ideas stay alive because he says, geez, I, I, Lionel, I, I, I feel as though we've never met, but I feel as though your idea, you're, you're talking to me as I go through the day, he says, because he's keeping the whole awareness of happiness alive. He's using it from moment to moment, day to day, finding it in books, living it in his life, learning it just as you do, George. And if we don't practice happiness, we're not going to have happiness. And it's just as simple as that. So. We've got every kind of other uh, way, road signs to tell us, be, uh, uh, stay on the road, you know, there's a fork in the road, how to get places, but there is no signs, no help at all in being happy. And that's what we need most of all. So there had to be a happiness club. Right, yeah, and I think that's very important because we can either learn things on our own or with others. Mm -hmm. And the great benefit of, of a happiness club, of happiness clubs, is that we're not working on this alone. I mean, there, when, when we go to these clubs and there are 50, 100 people working on the same thing, that inspires us, that motivates us. Mm -hmm. You know, there, you were talking before about there being power um, in numbers, um, happiness being about, like... Um, you know, taking on one's power. Mm -hmm. And um, when we have numbers of us working together on becoming happier, 
and sharing ideas and encouraging one another, mm -hmm. inspiring one another, that's going to make um, learning to become happier not just much uh, easier, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to inspire us to, to do much more, to really um, s um, use each other as, as a support, to, to build upon what we, what we um, learn, and, and again, to teach each other, to just like share what we know with each other so that the learning becomes, um, again, not just a, a one-person thing, just try and absorb something, but a sharing that, that, um, that uh, communicates itself to, to everyone around us. Yeah, uh, George, I can't agree with you more. And I think for the purposes of what you're talking about, uh, we have to let people know that there is a website, and it's www.happinessclub.com. It's all one word, uh, happinessclub.com. You can go on the Internet and uh, look for the site. On the site, uh, and I don't think I've mentioned this before, there's, uh, uh, there's about 360 books on happiness that I've read, personally read and recommend, and they're excellent books. They really are. And you could find out uh, uh, how to be happy, how to be happier, how to take it with you, how to use it uh, by different authors. Uh, also on the, on the website there is uh, at this point maybe 85 articles on happiness that I write for a newspaper. They're all available on the website to you. If you, when you first get on the website, there's a little icon there. You push that button. You can get a free uh, newsletter that goes out every uh, other week. It's called the Hap Happy Newsletter and uh, that contains the latest article uh, along with uh, things that people are writing in. You know, the uh, people listening to this show could just get on the, uh, get on the uh, website and uh, get the uh, email address happinessclub at, a happinessclub at AOL and uh, send in your thoughts, send in your questions. I mean, you know, the interesting thing, George, about our relationship, you and I, is happiness brought us together. And I think uh, it's a strange phenomenon because what, what you and I want to do is give. We're, we've already got what we need, and when you give, you're sort of getting more. But you're not, you're not doing it to get more. It's just an automatic response. Just like the conversation I had uh, with Amy Branch out in California today, who announced that you know she's begun. She got a, a group of uh, friends together in her home, and she uh, was playing tapes from the Happiness Show, and then they had some discussions. And I've got to find out more about what she's doing, but uh, it's begun. And as a psychologist and a, as a uh, very soon to be PhD, I'm enthralled that she's uh, that we've got professionals out there who understand the meaning of happiness, who understand that this is something that yes, it goes right up to the PhDs and the uh, you know and the uh, psychiatrists of the world who are bringing positive psychology to the world, but it also is for us, the regular everyday people, to use happiness because. It's there for us. I mean, this is a God-given right, and it just gets right down to us making the choices that we're worth it. And there it is. And actually, yeah, you bring up a good point because um, this is about people getting together for, for a common purpose, a common cause. Uh, unfortunately, even though governments are supposed to like try to make as many people as happy as possible, and psychology is really supposed to be about trying to help um, people in general become as happy as, as we can, there really aren't any uh, kinds of programs, any kinds of institutions devoted to happiness. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what we're trying to create. For example, um, there are 12-step groups throughout the country, probably throughout the world, different kinds of 12-step tw step groups for different kinds of um, issues, different kinds of needs. Now, the beauty of these groups is that they're run by members. It's, it's not like as if it's attached to any one institution or organization. They, they can spring up all over. They, they can be run by anyone, and they are very cost-effective. They, you know, it, um, it pretty much doesn't cost anything to r run a group like that. You might have to rent a space, maybe not. You know, that could be donated. Mm -hmm. But that's the idea. Um, our governments and our colleges, our, our healthcare industry, haven't really caught on to the the benefits that that, that um, derive from from helping people to come ha become happier, and haven't really taken responsibility for what should be done in that area. So these clubs, you know, 
it's kind of like a grassroots approach to change culture from the bottom up, from people just deciding that happiness is really what it's about. I mean, there, you know, there's nothing else. There, I mean, <laughs> happiness, I mean, love is great because it makes us happy. Um, goodness is great because it helps us to become happier. I mean, anything in life, it, it's all about happiness. And um, the more we can involve people in understanding that and working together at, at whatever level, you know, we're going to start um, with the clubs, but hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully eventually businesses will, will um, take this on and governments will hopefully, you know, begin to do this also. Mm -hmm. But the clubs, I think, is an ideal place to start because then you can get people um, from all walks of life, from all experiences, sharing their ideas and thinking about it and, and really mm -hmm. just creating a kind of a, a mindset that could really then be reflected reflected by the rest of our culture. Wow, and uh, George, the fact that you and I are sitting here together is pretty much proof that uh, this is working. I mean, uh, you know, when I was doing it, I was doing it, but when we're doing this together, it became a movement just by the fact that two of us, you know, got involved. And there are many people who are involved with uh, happiness, and it's starting to catch on, probably because in the last, I would say, 12 years, psychologists have really understood the benefits of being happy. They're trying to unscramble the code. They're trying to understand how you do this. We've got the code unscrambled. I mean, if you go on the website you, and you get the newsletter, you're going to learn that it's not 12 steps, it's not 10 steps, it's, it's one, really one step. The decision to be happy, which you can only make in this moment, maybe you'll make it 30 years from now, but it'll be in, in a moment just like now. And if you make that decision, then you have the power to choose happiness over unhappiness. Why do that? I know I'm probably repeating myself, but this is such a simple concept. But because it's simple, that doesn't mean we've learned it. And the, it comes down to that being in a happier state makes you much more powerful. And it makes you much more able to deal with the circumstances that life can throw at you. So. That's really what it comes down to. Are you going to be at your best and experience the best, or are you going to just succumb to being unhappy because that's what you believe life is, or that's what you believe uh, the travel uh, through life's journey is to be unhappy? Well, if you believe that, I, I don't want to change your mind. I think, I think you're right. But, you know, it's funny. You, you can either be right or you can be happy. You can't be both. I'm not here to be right. And I'm certainly not here to make anyone wrong, but I am here for one reason. I'm happy, period, end of story. If you want some of that, that's up to you. <laughs> yeah, and actually, that's, that brings, that's a very interesting point, because what happens is that um, for all of us, um, happiness is the main point in, in life. I mean, this is biological. This is based on what's known in psychology as the hedonic principle, that we are hardwired biologically to seek pleasure and to mm -hmm. avoid pain. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what happens is a lot of times we become distracted with means to become happy or with, with different things that we think will help us become happier. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But often what happens is they distract us from our main goal. Like when, when you say that some people may not want happiness, I think generally they may not realize that they want it. So like, um, and I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like understandable because like our culture um, encourages uh, success, academic success, uh, business success, success in different projects, sports, mm -hmm. uh, making money. And we haven't yet evolved to the, to the point that um, culturally through our institutions, through the media and government and schools, we are like teaching people that, hey, you know, all those things are great but it, they're great because they help us to become happier. So what, what we can do on the show and what, what happiness clubs can do is really to, to focus people on, on what really is what they want. I mean, if a person chooses, for example, not mm -hmm. to pursue happiness, it's probably because they feel they'll be happier that way than, than a, a, trying to attempt this task. Well, it could be that, but it also could be conditioning. You know, it's very hard to break out of conditioning, and if you're not sold on the idea that there's a better way to live, then you're not going to attempt it. And I say the reason that we're unhappy is because we're oblivious to the fact that we're, we have the choice to be happy. We're, or, or we're unconscious to the choice. We haven't really awakened 
to our own power. And this is really, uh, you know, and if you want to talk about religion, which we're really not going to be talking about, but uh, what would God, God want more for you, you or me than to see us happy? But I say we've already gotten everything we need to be happy. Now we just got to utilize it. And the truth is that all the research, as you well know, George, is bearing out that all the money in the world, all the success that we clamor for and gain and, and actually achieve is empty in many cases. When you're not fulfilled from the inside, when you're not happy to begin with, it's an empty feeling. It just doesn't get you there. Right. And I mean, let's go back to what you were talking about before about happiness being a decision, because I think that's a very simple but profound concept. Yeah. The idea is that, um, for example, let's say there are two people who have this exact same amount of money, same mm -hmm. amount of success, same lifestyles, everything the same, yeah. but let's say one of them is happier, much happier mm -hmm. than the other. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's because that person has said, well, you know, what I have is, is, is enough for me to be very, very happy, um, perhaps mm -hmm. in some cases completely happy. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, because what happens is we generally, our, our, our happiness is sometimes limited by our thinking that we need things, our, our deciding that, well, you know, logically or in a certain sense, I can't be all that happy because I don't have this kind of a job or I don't have um, enough of this or that, success, mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we invent things. We, we come up with things that we decide are necessary for our happiness. When what, what you were saying before and what the fact of the matter is, is that um, we don't need any of those things. The, all we need is to decide that we're going to be very happy, as you said, no matter what. Right. And right. Oh, absolutely, George. And I think the other thing that you're talking about that I can't agree with you more is that, uh, you know, we all want more. But the, but the strange thing is that there are some people who want more because that's, they think that's what it's about. But they're being driven for more because they cannot experience what they have. So no matter how much more they get, they don't have enough. And the interesting thing is that when you come out of gratitude, which is probably a, a very large aspect of happiness, being grateful, gratitude, when you're grateful for what you have, you actually, believe it or not, could set up the dynamic where you can get more. Because the truth is that unless you can accept what you have and be grateful for what you have, you really can't have more. You, you could have more flow in, but if you're not aware of it, it won't be more. And that's why you gotta go out there and get more and more and more because it's not, it's not making the dent. So uh, it's interesting because when you're grateful for what you have and you feel like you got more than enough, then everything that comes into your life really escalates your abundance. Then you experience it totally. And you know, you're not you're not living your life out of need. You're living your life out of fulfillment and you're enjoying everything. It really is yours to enjoy. And if it's not there, you say, Well, I enjoyed it, I had it, and you'll move on to something else. You'll enjoy the next thing. But we really can't trust ourselves enough to to step into this moment and to fully be involved with this moment. We just can't, we have everything we need to be happy, but we haven't got the realization that we can be happy now. But we need to make the commitment. You know, the decision to be happy, like any decision, your future will be what you decide now. Forget about the happiness decision. If you decide that some part of your life is gonna be better, that decision now is gonna affect the whole, your whole life you will live in a future based on the decisions you make now. And how many decisions have you made? Well, happiness is the best decision you can make and it, and it affects every other aspect of your, of your, li of your life, including your health, uh, your emotional well-being, families, relationships, it just, and your ability to make money as far as I'm concerned if you feel that that's gonna be important to you. So it's, it's just fantastic. Yeah, actually I wanna make one clarification. You were talking about like, making the decision to be happy. Fortunately, fortunately about 90% of us here in the United States are happy, but I think the whole truth is that um, on average we're, we're not very happy at all. We're only like 70% happy. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's not just, you know, for some of us, for about 10% of us, it is about becoming happy, but for most of us is that we have decided or we have um, 
we have appreciated our lives only enough to be somewhat happy. Mm -hmm. And again, that's because as we were talking about before, we become distracted by these other aspects of life that become more important to us than our happiness. Mm -hmm. so, that, um, so that basically, you know, it's not just about becoming happy for most of us, it's about becoming very happy. Um, there, and we have our role models, we have our influences, about 20% about of us here in the United States are 85% happier, happy or happier. And th these are pretty happy people, so I mean, mm -hmm. we see them when, we, we, when we're um, in the streets, you know, smiling, really enjoying life. These can be our, our role models and mm -hmm. they, they can really show us um, how to focus, how to, how to just create that kind of um, environment, that kind of lifestyle that, that leads to, to again, um, to great happiness. Yeah, well, you're so right, George, and um, I would say that it comes down to not even wanting to be happy, it's being happy. It's a present state that you a actively engage in, that you find yourself being in all the time. I mean, you're, you're being human, you're being alive. Being happy is an aspect of breathing. I mean, just like you breathe in and out, if you find uh, that you can get yourself to the point of being happy no matter what all the time, then you use happiness as a strategy to live your life so that you uh, actually cause good things to happen. And you actually master situations because things can come up, but if you know you're going to do the best you can to deal with those things, those things aren't even going to matter. You know, it's not about not having problems. There's always a problem. I mean. You know, something uh, could fall off here in the props and uh, that'll be a problem, but it won't be because life is just chock full of problems. How you deal with it is everything. What happens is nothing. <laughs> because you get to live with how you've decided to deal with it. So that's why happiness becomes the focal point. It's how you deal with what's going on, not what's happening. So that's why happiness clubs are important and I hope that you uh, at least check out uh, happinessclub.com and uh, you know uh, let us know what you're doing you want to start a happiness club right, out there I, I got interrupted I'm sorry we gotta go all right okay. well that's all we have time for today thanks for watching in the future we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life uh, be good think well feel very happy and I hope you'll join us again next week here on the happiness show happiness is powerful it's our underlying need Happiness is why we live each day Happiness is destiny So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy